Okay, well I think we've had my rant for today. I think I've been ranting for the last bloody 24 hours, but uh, you know, you got to put these things to the test. You know, you get to a certain point, a line in the sand, and you say, you know, it's time to put the things to the test. Live and die by the evidence that you can create with the theory. If it's built on firm foundations, you should stand firm, stand tall, stand proud. Yes. I mean, I've seen those red root hairs before, but I just didn't have the capabilities back then of uh, being able to capture it. I didn't have, I didn't know, I didn't have my infinity focus uh, on, on the, uh, my old VHS camera. It was before that. I hadn't quite, because I remember uh, on that Shiva Diva disc, I'm talking to Donnie about having just discovered it sort of thing. And you look at the date on that and it's after when I saw these root hairs. So I didn't actually have the ability to capture them uh, at close close up with the, the infinity focus that I, I learnt to. wasn't even in the instruction book, bastards. But anyway, if I ever see those crimson red root hairs again, which I expect to see now, because you know if everything is right, you should be able to get those crimson red root hairs. They are good enough to be on the front cover of a CPN. It's just a front cover. They're that good. I've seen them, they are that good. They are good enough, on their own, be a, be a picture on a front cover of a CPN. And of course then, you wanna show them being covered in mycorrhizae. I don't think that would be worth a front cover, but you know, the color, the absolute spectacular crimson red color of these roots with their crimson red root hairs, is just, well, I've seen it. And it's amazing, and take it from me, I reckon, with all my CP experience over the years, that just a sight of those crimson red roots is good enough for front cover on CPN. Maybe that will be my legacy, showing an alternative ra uh, reality by crimson red root hairs on crimson red roots on the front cover of CPN. Maybe that is the A, B, D, C line in the sand sort of thing. We've come so far, fellas, and now we're going forwards into the future. Well, we've actually pulled the future into the present, and we're going forwards. Maybe I do need to have this rant. Maybe that's what it is. It's the 40 years of crap. You know, had I had those three paragraphs and that photograph in the paper back in Western Australia, maybe things would have been different. Had those two scientists come back when they said they were going to come back. Maybe my life would have been different. Maybe my dad would have decided, oh, he's doing all right. We'll stay in Western Australia. So I would have had the last 40 years or so spent you know, in the place where I had the second half of my childhood and grew up sort of thing, in areas that I knew, you know, I didn't have to come here and, you know, to a somewhat disappointing area where there are fewer species and they're all basically the same. But maybe I needed to do that, maybe that's what it is. Maybe I needed to be a sand groper trapped outside of Western Australia. Because you really are, I can tell you fellas, that sand gets into your blood and to the day I'm dying, I will say yes, I'm a sand groper. I may have been trapped outside Perth, Western Australia for, you know, nigh on 40 years or anything. I'm nearly 50 and I would love to go back, but I don't think I'll ever be able to go back. I don't think I can afford to go back. I don't, half of me is saying, do I really want to go back? Because some of the areas of my childhood probably aren't even there and some of the damage to the ecosystem will probably make me want to cry. I know, yes, it's getting to that sort of stage, you know. Other people have just ripped into the bush and tubers have been sp sp sent flying around the world, you know, mainly because they were despised plants. In my, in my, in my day, CPs were despised plants, you know. Yeah, you, know, you don't want to study those, you know. They're, they're basically toys or, you know, uh, they're toy plants in a way, so they're almost not real plants in a way. Well, yes, they are real plants. They're manganese nickel plants, basically, growing on gutful sand. So you have all these carpets of flowers and things, you know, coming up from seemingly gutless sand, but at the time that the plants are actually growing on the sand, it's gutful sand. So, and I think I've had a gutful. 
and I think I'm gonna end this thing and go home and watch the drum and have a bloody another donut and another one of these I think or a nice cup of coffee a warm because as I said the the chill in the air is a bit sort of coming off the Antarctic today as it so often does during the, the wet here in southern Australia with the uh, the clockwise spiral of and the arms coming off of Antarctica and there's plenty of tea tree here so I'm sure we're going to be back looking in all this area here over the coming season hopefully not with so much ranting and raving but yeah as I said it's, it's like that Beach Boys song it's been building up inside of me for oh so how long you know so why didn't those two scientists do what they say that said they were going to do why didn't they come back at the end of the season you know there's me as a child saying to my other friends, oh, you, you'll see, they'll, they'll be back. They'll be back. It'll be different. No, they never came back. Well, maybe they did come back five or six years later when I'd move into state. I'll grant them that latitude. Maybe the older bloke, who was like 10 years older, look, you know, I'm sure he was a smoker. He's probably died now. He's probably died of cancer. I wouldn't be surprised. But anyway, I think this clip's going on fair too long. It's probably going to take 12 or 15 hours to upload. But maybe from a historical point of view, it needs to be uploaded. You need to really understand the effort that's taken. The personal effort to, you know, crawl out from a really bad theory into the light of day of the scientific method built on firm foundations that actually works and does something for you you know you're not just wasting your time your energy your money and your you know supplies and your plants and everything else you know you're not just wasting them you're not having a wasted life and all these other people trying to grow the things they want to grow because they really like them and they're just basically just wasting their time and their effort and their lives basically because they don't have a theory that actually works that's built on firm foundation that actually delivers practical results well I think over the next six months you're going to slowly start to see things slowly crawl out of the dark ages into the light I think the CP dark ages A, D to B, C and whatever way you want to view that we're going heading into the future into the light the light on the hill isn't that what we're all struggling for I mean, what about these people at DuPont that did all the Teflon work, you know? They're not even, they're probably not even here now. But their Teflon is. Isn't that the whole point? It's a different form of wealth that they've given us. And we, the kids of today in the school, should know their names on the tip of their, their names should be on the tip of their tongue, I reckon. People who made a, a nylon and Teflon and Rubik's Cube and all those things that when you bring the future into the present and it stays here and it's here not just for you or me or or your our generation different continents of the world it's here for all time so it can affect future generations and they can do with it whatever they wish to do hopefully for good not for bad anyway i think that's me this is going to be a 20 hour upload i reckon but it's glad to get it off my chest and we'll start with capenses and we'll build up from there because that's the ubiquitous sundew that is the orphan child of the CP world you know some people respect it it's very beautiful it's just a little bit small if it was, a little, if it was twice the size it would be on the par with read you maybe it would get more respect I like it it's, it's an ever-growing plant if you're living in a Mediterranean climate it's always growing so it's always testable you can always use it as a test plant that's why I like it. There's no real dormancy period when you're living in a Mediterranean climate like Australia. People over the seas can also use it if they're living in the Mediterranean. They can use it to test things at all times of the year. It may grow a bit more slowly in the colder times, but it's still growing, actively producing leaves, testable leaves that you can look at and recall results from. Yeah, almost growing roots as well. And what happened back in the 1970s? Capensis always used to have these big, fat, colourful, you know, magenta -y to red roots on them. You know, big, long roots. I haven't seen any roots like that for decades, basically. Really. 
So our hobby is not only a bad hobby in a way, it's gone backwards. So now I think we're going to have to go back to the 1970s in a way to go forward. And I think that's what's going to happen over the next six months. We're going to go back to the 70s to go back to the future. Or forward to the future anyway. Anyway, plenty of stuff to look at here later on. Not quite what I was expecting, but uh, anyway. Oh, I reckon it's going to take me uh, the rest of the month to upload these things, but I'm going to upload them anyway. I think, what the heck, you live and die by your thesis and the practical results that will come out over the next six months to the, you know, over this growing season, basically. Start off with capensis. You may laugh at first, but I reckon you won't be laughing by Christmas. I think your ears will be pricked up by Christmas, especially when we get on to things like rhubarb. You know, the classical rhubarb. Everyone says, oh, it's so hard to grow, but everyone wants to grow rhubarb. And it's one of those plants that's affected by, you know, you put a tablespoon of salt in a, in a watering can, sprinkle it on the salt, it does seem to actually improve the growth. Oh, the other plant was horseradish, by the way, I forgot the name. Horseradish. I mean, isn't it funny that people have grown rhubarb and horseradish in the past have gone on to CPs always seem to grow really good CPs. Is there a connection there? Is there something you learn from growing rhubarb and horseradish that allows you to grow better CPs? Something that's handed down from generation to generation never actually quite gets into the books. Well, maybe it's in a very old book. I mean like a medieval book. I don't know. But I'm sure as time goes on we'll learn these things. Things that you were never told. Maybe that's a good title for this series, I don't think. I don't know. Anyway, over and out. Wasn't quite as, I don't know, interesting, but it's a good day's outing. Okay, next time it'll be down to Mount Compass, I think. Let's see if I can get some Jemmy for Sean and Gideon and Rossi of, well, it's just the standard red red, you know, the. Uh, Bookman Road, basically it's the Bookman Road for them because it's, you know, it's so close to Bookman Road. I mean, it's just we never knew they were growing that close to Bookman Road. Okay. Over and out. And sorry for the rant and rave, but I think it was necessary. As I said, I don't think you'll be laughing by Christmas. Over and out.